after arriving at the gates of hell twice, my guest's extreme passion is to plunder hell to populate heaven. Next. I've thought for myself in every area of life, but one, I knew nothing until I discovered a realm where the truth isn't what it seems. A realm where the truth becomes reality. I've spent over 50 years investigating the world of the supernatural. Every moment has led up to the main event. Millions of Jewish people will be saved all over the world. God's heart is for all to believe, for none to perish. It's called the greater glory. Do you believe? It's supernatural. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Go and throw. My guest, Scott McNamara, was raised by a single Christian mom. At 24, Scott had a near-death experience. Tell me about it. Yeah, so I got caught up in circles of notorious criminals, kingpin, gang members, gang leaders, kind of uh, dealing a lot of drugs. My friend from school was a drug baron, and he began to grow in the criminal underworld, and so I just found myself... Now, now where was this? This is in Liverpool, England, and it kind of culminated when a gang leader, a guy that I knew, he gave me $800 of pure, uncut cocaine, and I took these drugs, and my friend Stephen, who was living with me, I woke him up, and we turned it into a party. Within 20 minutes, Stephen was overdosing in my arms. He was convulsing, foaming at the mouth, and his eyes rolled to the back of his head while, while I held him in my arms. He got taken off dead in an ambulance, and as I stood in that street watching the ambulance drive away, I saw the gates of hell appear, and I was moving at speed towards, towards this entry point, and I knew I had about 60 seconds left to live. I could feel the fear under my skin. It was uh, gripping me, and I knew once I crossed this line, I would never go back, and I got to the edge of the line, and I, all I did was pray. I said, God, keep me alive, and I'll turn to you. Keep Stephen alive, and I'll turn to you. I begged for our lives. And as I got to the precipice of eternity, one foot dangling over hell, somebody was holding me, keeping me back from crossing. And I believe that that was the Good Shepherd. My friend was resuscitated in the ambulance, and he got discharged the next day. And 23 years later, we both served Christ internationally. Tell me about what happened at 4 a.m. after you hard to believe, yeah. resumed a hedonistic lifestyle. I found myself four o'clock in the morning, I picked a fight with three gentlemen. I was hanging out uh, outside of a bar in Liverpool city centre, a very rough place, and I picked a fight with three guys. They ended up turning on me, banging my head against metal bars. They were jumping up and down on my head, and I really thought I was going to die. I couldn't get up from the ground. But suddenly, in the moment, I thought, this is the end for me. I saw two figures in a car, way, way in the distance and a voice came from this vehicle. The voice said, stop, that's enough. Now, the vehicle was, in, it was some distance away. I was on the floor. So how did you hear it? I don't know. It was supernatural. But I heard these, th this voice. It just said, stop, that's enough. Now, these three crazy guys were, were plumbling me, were killing me. They were jumping up and down on me, but they even stopped immediately, and they walked away. And th those voices, and I believe they were angels, saved my life that night. Eventually, I think I was humbled from that experience. Two, two near-death experiences did it for me. I sat in the hospital. I was coming down from cocaine and ecstasy and alcohol. I was in a very bad state, and I really felt like I was going to die as I sat in that hospital. My friend, who was uh, my old friend Paul, was one of my band members from, from my past. He picked me up. He's a non-Christian. He's an atheist. He collected me in the car, and I turned around to me. I got in the car, I turned around, and said, Paul, I'm going to go back to church. I went to this conference, and my life changed after that conference. I sat there. And in this moment, this preacher got up to speak. And as he walked up the stairs, things began to change. The atmosphere began to shift. And I realized that I saw this room last night in my dream. Everything, the, 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 you know, down to the wallpaper, down to the chairs, the people. I turned to this guy, I said, I saw all of this in a dream. What's going on? And he kind of smiled. He said, it's okay. So in that moment, I, the, the gospel was about to be preached, and my, my body, the spirits in me didn't like it. I had to leave. I felt this tsunami of fear washing over me. So I went outside the room, and I felt like I was in a tug of war for about 10 minutes. I was being pulled into a place of complete despair, fear, death. 
And then I, get, I got pulled into a place of peace and light and joy. This went on for about 10 minutes. And I, I knew I had this revelation. God was saying, you have to choose. I can't choose for you. You have to choose. So I began to tingle from head to toe, pins and needles. And I said, God, everything I have, it's time. You can take it. Yeah. And the rope was cut and I was a free man. I began to weep and wail. I lifted my head, weeping and wailing, and I looked up to see three men walking towards me, and they had beams of light protruding out their eyes. And I knew in that moment that I once was blind, but now it's, I can see. I was born again in that moment. Now, you won. Uh, and th this, this is amazing to me. Yeah. I assume only one person wins this. You actually won a free trip to Israel? To Israel, amen, amen. Now, obviously, I've never been to Israel. I was a four-month-old believer. I went to my church. They had a, there was a conference. God TV were touring England. So, I mean, thousands of people, you know. And they said, put your name, write down your name, and we're going to put it in a heart, and we're going to pick one winner from every 12 cities that we tour. I wrote down my name. The Holy Spirit says, you're going to win. Clear as day, I heard it. Now, I'm a brand new believer. So, sure enough, they go on the stage, they pick out my name out the hat. Now, they say, don't get too excited. We pick one winner from all 12 churches. You haven't won yet. I go home to my rough apartment I'm living in, and I put my key in the door. The Holy Spirit says, when you win, take Chris. Chris was my friend who discipled me. I called him. I said, I haven't won, but this is what the Lord said. He says, pack your bags, baby. We're going to Israel. <laughs> so sure enough, I get the call two weeks later. They said to me, it's clear that you were meant to be on this trip. We picked another name, but we couldn't find this person. We emailed them. We called them. We couldn't locate this individual. So we picked again and you were the second winner. They said, we're very clear at God TV that you were the guy that was meant to be on this trip. I go to Israel, I have a two-week tour, five-star tour with uh, Rory and Wendy Alec, the founders of God TV, the first ever uh, Israel tour with God TV. I go there, five-star trip. So when I was there, the, the, the day, the, the kind of, it was Pentecost Sunday, a big ceremony in King David's Citadel. There was worship, there was prayer, and God TV said, we're going to bring you up, you're going to share your testimony live on God TV. <laughs> so before this happened, I can only describe it as, as like the veil behind the supernatural was removed. I saw two archangels covering the circumference of the citadel. As clear as I'm looking at you right now, huge, huge angels. I could see them just like I'm looking at you. And, and I, I couldn't, you know, I was just marveling at this sight, but I, I didn't know how to describe it. I told my friend Chris, there's archangels. And he's like, hey, and he's like waving <laughs> at these angels and stuff. Yeah, well, like, help me though. Yeah. Describe them. All, well I can, them all I can describe it, 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 the only way I can describe them is just the, the size of them. They were just so huge. And then I was invited to go then. I, it was, this was minutes before I gave my testimony live on God TV. I saw these angels. The next day, I was walking down the streets of Jerusalem and a river began to flow out of my mouth. I'd never spoken in tongues. But walking down the streets of Jerusalem, I began to pray with my friend. And as I began to pray, I can just describe it like a river, it began to flow out of my mouth and I couldn't stop speaking in tongues. I just kept going and going and going. That was the moment that I received that baptism of the Spirit. After all this supernatural activity, you know, it was really, it was enough for a hundred years for, for, for a man, I believe, what the Lord blessed me with. But even after that, Due to my PTSD, I began to sink back into this dungeon of despair, into an abyss of addiction. I began to, because of post-traumatic stress disorder, I had to self-medicate. The doctors put me on medication. I was in and out of hospital getting tests. I was very, very... Uh, uh, this was really because of your two experiences of see, yeah. seeing hell. Yeah, yeah. It was like a post-traumatic uh, stress kind of disorder thing, yeah. And uh, so I didn't know how to deal with it. The doctors couldn't, couldn't heal me. Um, I had prayer. I, I didn't know what was going on. So I began to pick up alcohol again. That led me back into alcoholism, back into drug addiction. Now, I'd met this beautiful woman. She's from Ireland. I, go to, I went to London Bible College. I walk in my first day. The Holy Spirit says, that's your wife. I said, Lord, I'm not arguing with that. She was beautiful. <laughs> so I, uh, I began to pursue this beautiful Irish lady, and she was kind of playing it cool. I, I went into the reception where we had the photographs taken for the students, and I, I prophesied. I looked at that picture. I said, you will be mine. That's how much I wanted this girl. And I finally got her, and we began a date. And as we began a date, my PTSD grew and I began to drink kind of like secretly and stuff and long story short we got married and after about six months of getting married it really began to get out of control long story short my, my child my first child was born and within a few months of that my wife left me uh, my drinking was out of control I broke my marriage vows I, I did all the things that I I couldn't believe I could go back to such a life after the grace that the Lord showed me and it went very, very bad. I, I lost uh, my, my beautiful dream woman. Um, I lost her and I lost my child as well. And then after that, I thought, 
Let's just hit the self-destruct button. I don't know how to get back from this. I was homeless. I had nowhere to live. I was back into addiction, steeped into addiction. And I didn't know how to get back from it. And then something beautiful happened. One night I was in Belfast in Northern Ireland. I was in a nightclub and I was like, I was always the last guy to leave. And I was in this club. I find a club that was open all night. I stood there with this guy I met, made a friendship with. And as I picked up my drink, I heard a voice. I, had a vo I heard a voice, but I had a revelation with that voice. The revelation was, this is the father speaking to you. And he said, Scott, and as I heard him call my name, I was moved, physically moved back. And I put down my drink and I walked out of that bar. Within a number of months, I was back in the arms of Christ. And I found out that my friend Chris, who I told you about, who discipled me, he was having a prayer visual with other people crying out for my soul. And we timed it that it was around the same time. That this Saint, is that amazing? The same time yeah. Scott has won so many to the Messiah, to a concept called making space for them to experience their own God encounter. Be right back for your God encounter. Attention, this is an urgent message to every believer. 96% of Christians are not leading anyone to Jesus. Believers fearful of offending others do not share the gospel. Some think that they don't know enough so they don't evangelize. Many want to deeply encounter God and live supernaturally but are not. All that changes right now with Scott McNamara's CD set and his book, Jesus at the Door, Evangelism Made Easy, as he overturns all your preconceptions. Jesus at the Door, Evangelism Made Easy is an invitation from the Holy Spirit. Nine points downloaded by the Holy Spirit where he gave me his phrases with an image that you can share with everyday people and you can win them to Christ. So simple, so easy, living in sync with the Holy Spirit. An anointing on these CDs will inspire you and encourage you and even an impartation you can receive. Toss the fear and start winning souls. Just call or go online at sidroth.org slash 10018 with your donation of $36 or more with free shipping and handling for Scott McNamara's dynamic How to Share Your Faith book, Jesus at the Door, Evangelism Made Easy, which includes his handy tear-out equipping card. Plus, you'll get Scott's newly produced three-CD audio teaching series, Living in Sync with the Holy Spirit. And you won't find this exclusive and proven evangelism encounter package anywhere else. Scott, I am fascinated by the way God uses you to reach one-on-one -on -one unsaved people. Um, how did the Lord download this supernatural way to you? Yeah, it was really incredible. I, wasn't, I didn't feel qualified to be an evangelist. I was thrust into a, a position with a pastor. He gave me six month, uh, a six, he gave me a six month trial position to stand on a street and bring one soul to Christ. I was bringing about maybe one soul every six or eight months. Uh, I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I went onto those streets and the Holy Spirit began to speak to him. I would pray for the sick and I would try and articulate the gospel and the Lord would drop a phrase into my spirit. And as I said that phrase to this non-believer, the atmosphere became charged and changed. They could feel it, I could feel it. It was incredible, I wrote it in my phone. I feel it as you're telling Come me on. about <laughs> Come it. Come on, amen. <laughs> and I'm a believer. <laughs> amen, amen. And I wrote down these phrases and over about nine months, I ended up with what we call Jesus at the door. It's nine, uh, nine points that, that are image-related points that articulate succinctly the message of the gospel. We have an image on one side of Jesus knocking on the door, and on the other side we have the message. And it was given, it was given by the Holy Spirit, honestly. It wasn't how I thought people should hear the gospel, it was how He thought they should hear it. it was, I, I didn't ask for it, I wasn't looking for it, I didn't sit around the table like this with theologically sound scholars seeking to form an evangelistic technique to win the masses. Honestly, I just said, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, but please help me. And in that moment, he gave me something and then said, now go and give it away. Now we're in 169 nations. We have individuals using our app to lead people to Christ through what we call Jesus at the door. You say many of us are getting in the way of the Holy Spirit because we don't give him room. Mm. Uh, explain. Yeah, I think our, our experience can rob our encounter. 
So if we know what we're doing too much, then what we do is we negate the Holy Spirit to the sidelines. We negate this power of our partnership with the Holy Spirit. We're like, Lord, I, I, I've got it. I've done this for, for 15 years. I know what I'm doing. We relegate the Holy Spirit to the sidelines, not knowingly. So what we do, what Jesus at the door does, it keeps you humble. You see, the tip of the spear of every encounter is a moment where we pray for them to feel the Spirit. We say, if Jesus were here right now, would you let him in? And we pray, and they have their own moment. You see, if you can talk somebody into being a Christian, someone else can come along and talk them out of it. What they need is an encounter, and they can only have an encounter if you introduce them to the God of the encounter. And that is the tip of the spear of every encounter that we lead with Jesus at the door. You say we. It's not just you. Others do exactly what you do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, the, the, we have an app with this simple presentation that's now in 169 nations being used. But not only that, the Lord began to increase this vision to us. He began to show us that, that actually this really is for everybody. The Great Commission wasn't given to evangelists. It was given to disciples. This is a call for every single disciple. Okay, September 2022, you had an amazing vision. I was sitting in my prayer closet one morning and I had a vision. The presence of God fell in my prayer closet, and I saw Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. I saw him on a horse, on a horse in a shield. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I'm raising up an army for the end times to push back darkness. He said, I want to call it the King's Army. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, said, Revelation 19:11. I'm on the floor weeping. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a mess in this moment. And I crawl for my Bible. I open my Bible, I turn to Revelation 19, 11, and I read about the, the second coming. I read about Jesus coming back strong on a horse, just like I'd seen in my vision, coming back on a horse strong with the armies of heaven behind him. And he began to show me that this was the Logos confirmation, his written word confirming what it spoken, uh, what it confirmed in the, in the spoken word. I then said, Lord, if we're going to have an army, we need a barracks. Every army has a barracks, huh? Of course. The, the Holy Spirit whispered in my ears to start looking. Now, I didn't have any money for a barracks, but I led a man to the Lord at 10 p.m. in a grocery store. This man went on to buy a building that we rent off him. I baptized him and his wife, and they bought a building, purchased a building that is the King's Army headquarters in Orlando, Florida. You know, you know, he had a prophecy about that army. Yeah. Now, bear in mind, I'm telling my wife, I'm telling my team. They're thinking, OK, maybe Scott's gone a little bit too far here. He's talking about armies and other stuff. So I was carrying the vision, but they had yet to, to behold it. They had yet to catch it. So I went to New York, and a, a prophet came up to me, and he prayed over me. As he put his hand on me, in my heart, I said, confirm the army says, I had a dream two years ago. I was sent behind enemy lines to retrieve the jacket of a general. He just comes out with this, and I'm like, wow. Mm. He says, on that jacket was a general's patch, and it was very significant. I woke up and researched it, and I bought that patch, and the Holy Spirit said, give it away when I tell you. The man walks away as I'm standing here being prayed for. He puts in my hand the general's patch from a dream two years previously. He then goes on to tell me, what you're doing, you're going to launch in January. Now, I told my team we're going to launch in January. He said, you're going to launch it in January. It's going to go international, and I see fires starting everywhere, little fires, and it's going to go around the world. And I see you sat around the round table with generals planning world domination. When you go out, you see amazing miracles. Yeah. Uh, tell me a couple of them. Yeah, I mean, we see really, we see kind of what we call souls to soldiers. We've seen people that we've led on the streets become soldiers of Christ and become part of the King's army. You know, this vision is about raising up everyday believers. I mean, if I can touch on uh, a bedrock scripture of our 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 4. The Apostle Paul said, suffer as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer, the one that enlisted him. And I feel that we're in this place of civilian Christianity rather than soldier Christianity. The King's Army's mandate, we believe that when every single person got saved, every believer got saved, they were enlisted into the King's Army. This is not my army. My name's not on the door. But when we got saved, we, we were enlisted by Christ to become soldiers in his army. We can live like civilians or we can live like soldiers. And I believe that when we rise, when we accept this invitation, we will begin to see the things that the Lord has placed and positioned for us in our lives. How is this connected with the Terracotta Army? Yeah. So the Terracotta Army. 
Terracotta Army really inspired me. The Lord showed me in the same day, the same vision, the Lord showed me the Terracotta Army. Terracotta Army, the, the first king, the first emperor of China, formed 8,000 life-size clay soldiers. And the idea, he thought that when he passed away, when he went to the afterlife, these soldiers would protect him. So he formed this army, thinking that it would cover him and protect him. Now, the Lord spoke to me and showed me that a lot of the church are living like these soldiers. They are clay, pieces of clay that have stood still. They're stagnant, they're immovable, and they're waiting for the afterlife so they can be reunited with their king. But you see, what we read in Isaiah 64, verse 8, says that we are the clay and you are the potter, and we are the work of your hands. And I also then saw another picture. I saw these pieces of clay come to life. I saw this army come back to life. And I saw what once was immobile and stationary and stagnant become a battle-born warrior, soldier of Christ, demon-slaying soldiers of Christ. The Lord showed me the church. He showed me the church as an army coming back to life. And I believe that is where we're at today. Tell me about Ryan Lennon. Yeah, yeah, Ryan was incredible. I was, I was living in Northern Ireland and we have, a lot of, we have a lot of paramilitary activity. So you guys know obviously the IRA and the, the nemesis of the IRA is the UDA, the Protestant side. There's a lot of these kind of uh, factions that are warring against each other. It's like a kind of uh, a mafia type situation that's gone on the ground. Well, in this, in this situation, I, I wrote a hit list of the people I wanted to, to, to see saved. I had a hit list of the individual gatekeepers that I knew would be mighty, mighty men of God. So I wrote them down and prayed. One of these men was a man called Ryan Lennon. And long story short, he came to my new believers group. He came into my home. And when he came into my home, I shared a simple gospel, gospel message. And I said, Holy Spirit, fall in this place. And this young man, 19 years of age, with 81 convictions at the age of 19, hmm. A man whose father was uh, in, the, in the paramilitaries, his mother was a heroin addict. He got raised in children's homes, into juvie, into adult prison. He was very notorious around the whole province. He began to weep like a baby as the spirit fell in that place. He was uncontrollably crying. I led him to the Lord right there in that moment, and then I began to disciple him. Now, Ryan was due to go to court for a crime he committed six months previous. We wrote references, and he stood before the judge, and the judge says, young man, Mr. Lennon, if I could step down from here and shake your hand, then I would, because seldom have I seen a transformation in a young man like I've seen in yours in these past six months. The judicial system knew all about this man. The police knew about him. The judges knew about him. And that made it into the local newspaper, which we put on our Sunday service on our screen. This man became very, very well known. The police service in Northern Ireland approached us and said, can we give you a list of names? Because we're hearing all about the transformation in this young man. It's incredible. Okay, I want you to look in the camera and I want you to pray for our viewers to feel and experience the presence of God, and then tell them how to know Jesus. Amen. Lord, I pray for that tangible breath of heaven to breathe on every individual, every prodigal. There's prodigals watching this right now. You've gone far from the Lord. Today is your day to come home. Today he says, come home. You've been saying, I need to feel. I need to experience. Holy Spirit, I ask you, Lord, turn up the heat. Lord, let them feel it right now. Even those ones who have the walls that have been built up, rejection and abuse and pain and addiction, those walls come tumbling down right now in the name of Jesus. Nothing can stand against the power of the living God. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord, that you are there with every individual. And Lord, let them feel the power of your love. And not only feel, but let them know the commissioning of the King. Let them know the commissioning of King Jesus. And I pray, if you're watching this and you don't know the Lord, I believe there are some soldiers right now. You haven't even been enlisted yet. You haven't even been saved yet, but you, you're feeling the presence of God. And the Lord is saying, this is what I've marked you for, to be a general in my army. So I pray right now for you. I want to ask you to repeat this prayer with me. If you're willing to open that door to Christ and not just say a prayer, but say, here's my life. I'm willing to enlist. Here's my life to be a soldier, to serve the King. Say these words with me. Say, Jesus, yes. Yeshua, forgive me for my sins. I open the door of my heart. I open the door of my heart. I make you Lord of my life. I make you Lord of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.